So as uh, I produce a 7mm model of this Andrew Barclay, uh, there is a demand for a 4mm model version of it, which Roger hasn't got time to do at the moment. Um, so using a spare bit of space on an etch that I've got to go in soon for another 7mm model, I'll use this spare space to create a 4mm model of the Andrew Barclay Williams Railway. As I say, I concentrate mainly on the 7mm range of kits in the Agenoria range. Um, Pete did do some 4mm models. Roger doesn't have an awful lot of time on his hands to be able to do the 4mm model of this particular prototype. So here I've got a etch that's been under development at the moment for another Andrew Barclay, an Andrew Barclay 16 inch. And I've got enough spare space on here to be able to do a 4mm model of the uh, Wins Railway Andrew Barclay 060. Um, using the 7mm one as the basis for it, taking the measurements from it, as Pete's models are pretty accurate, so I don't think we'd have any problems with the, uh, with the accuracy of the model. Um, here I've just drawn up the basic frames, um, but uh, whereas this would, under normal circumstances, be 7mm, this has been drawn up so that it is 4mm. I shall leave quite a lot of the detail off the 7mm one for this because a lot of the detail that you get on a 4mm model is lost. 7mm um, is one of those advantages in that you, you can use detail to its best advantage in that scale. So here we have the basic frames ready to, for the bearing holes etc. This is a very basic drawing at the moment and there we have the foot plate ready which, uh, as we have seen from the 7mm model, is exactly the, uh, exactly the same format. Um, there's a cab side there, cab top, bit that goes inside the slot there, the holes for the handrail knobs, and there's a bit more detail to add to that. Obviously a lot more work to do to it, but sooner or later um, this will then be etched, etched out in exactly the same way, probably on thinner metal uh, than I normally do. I uh, normally work on 18 fair metal. I uh, should probably do this on 12 or 15 at the most. What I shall need at some point is that, obviously with these frames the way they are, I need to know the size of these holes in relation to 4mm bearings so that you can slot them in. I shall also need to know whether or not you want this compensated because if that's the case these holes will need elongating a little bit, whether you want a compensation beam in there or whether you're just happy with just slots. Um, I also need to know what the width is between the frames. This is going to be a, um, a fold-up chassis, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mirror image that on there. So what I need to know is that distance there in between the frames, because when that's folded in, um, I need to know that. Obviously the, uh, the distance in between it, uh, let me just, if I did that as the sort of side of the frames. You imagine that that's the side there, that's the top. Um, so we've got the, uh, the axle going through here. I need to know what the width is, you know, how much the bearings take up and how much the wheels take up. So if the wheels are on there, so like that, I need to know what that distance is between there so that you've got enough space in between there for the wheels so that they, they've got a little bit of movement. Obviously it's not going to be that much but uh, they need to be. I need to know what that distance is there, the back-to-back -back distance, so that I can work out what this distance is going to be here. That's the main thing I need, I need to know before I can progress with that. Um, the rest of it is pretty much standard size stuff because it's just been blown down from 7mm to, uh, to 4mm using the uh, measurements off the 7mm model. But that's going to be the critical point there. Yep. Yeah, okay. The other thing that I need to know is um, if you can get hold of a set of uh, wheels um, so that I can, when I do a test etch, I've got some wheels to do. Um, bearings I can probably source from markets and get some of those, that's not a problem. And then the only other thing is, is obviously some of the castings will need to be made. Don't need all the detail that's on the seven millimeter castings, but I do need a dome, a chimney, and a safety valve. Uh, tank top fillers I can produce on the etch, I can make those up and fabricate those. 
as I can with the smoke box door as well. Some boxes and things like that are etched on the model anyway, so again, that's not a not a major problem. Um, and a lot of the other detail can be etched on there as well. It's not particularly highly. Uh, there's not an awful lot of castings on this particular prototype anyway, so we're, we're probably lucky in that way, in that we've just got to make the chim chimney down and, and firebox. So if you can source those for me, that would be great. Uh, well, if you're using Romford wheels or um, Gibson wheels or whatever wheels you're using sort of thing, I would imagine that they would be supplied with axles anyway, and markets will know the sizes of their axles. I should imagine they're probably 2 mil, um, two mil axles. So if they are, then the bear, they'll, they'll have bearings to suit them because they're pretty standard. Oh yeah, the uh, the chassis is a, is going to be of a fold up construction with additional uh, spaces in to strengthen the chassis up. Um, do you want it like that, or do you want just separate sides with separate spaces? I prefer the fold up chassis because it keeps it square, it keeps the axle holes square. Because even if you put slots in there for spaces, there is a tendency even a couple of thou it can move around and you can end up with the, with the chassis being slightly off skew sort of thing which doesn't aid the running. It's a lot better if you have a fold up chassis that way you know that it's all going to stay, stay square. Oh yeah, the uh, coupling rods, um, I'm probably going to have to overscale the coupling rods a slight bit for 4 mil. Um, it's a bit easy to keep them scale in 7 mil, but they are quite fine so I might have to overscale them but I shall need to know the diameter of the holes for bearings, for um, fixing the uh, coupling rods to the wheels, uh, whether or not they have a bearing on or whether they just use the screw as the bearing point, I don't know. Yeah, you should be able to. I mean, judging by that, how much space there, I mean, by the time that's all closed up, I mean, okay, I've got a few more bits, it's mainly small bits now, that's got to be double, but I would imagine the space that that's going to take up, you should be, uh, you should be able to get at least three on a sheet, I would have thought, uh, if not four, so... So, so yeah, and it, that well, that's um, that particular sheet size at the moment is 24 by 12. You could reduce that down to an 18 sheet, which will come about there. Um, so again, we get two or three on that, I would have thought. Um, but the cost, the cost isn't that much different anyway. So you might as well go for the bigger sheet anyway. It's only the metal cost itself that, that it's a little bit more. But then you're getting more on the sheet anyway. So it's all it's all it's relevant at the end of the day. And we should be able to get that done within, well, if, if I get that drawn up in the next couple of weeks, I can put it in. Um, as I say, if you want to pay for the edge, I can put it in straight away. If not, it'll have to join my queue, as it were. Um, but you should be able to, I should think initially with, with the tester, if, if uh, having, having said that it's, it's uh, cause, because the measurements are taken off the 7 mil one, don't think there's going to be an awful lot of errors. No, I'm going to be mi bits that are missed off. Um, because when you're doing these things, you sometimes find then that you've made a slight error on measurement. But as it's been copied from the 7mm one, it's not really, it, I think you're going to probably get it in first go 